has been an honor to be here. And uh, for the first time in the public, I'll be talking about Shops Up, uh, which is uh, which is uh, which is a new startup that we were on stealth mode for six months, and we haven't gone live. Uh, so we'll be going live in about a month's time. Uh, Shops Up. Uh, so Shops Up is basically was an inspiration that when when I and my founder, uh, Ms. Anmol, he's here, uh, uh, who individually had built our own individual companies, which is uh, fairly successful. When we met Mr. Jack Ma, we felt that uh, uh, in India, the so most of the e-commerce companies, as we know, uh, are burning cash. We don't understand unit economics in e-tailing, unless and until they attain the scale. So I've always believed is that um, as unit economics, uh, at least at the MVP stage, or even at a small stage, if you could uh, uh, if you are able to address the unit economics as a model, I mean, uh, uh, of course, scale is is basically to ensure that you are uh, are able to are able to scale for higher top line, higher EBITDA. But uh, at, at least the most important is to how do you make sure that you are addressing the of course addressing the problem of, without burning the cash and and how do you sustain the company on your own revenues and of course not much on the valuations or or the VC's money. So. Um, so it shops up in short. So, uh, so our vision is to make sure that uh, uh, we want to be the app for uh, helping helping users to discover products around them and stores around them. And uh, so, as we heard the speakers who were speaking about O2, uh, like Uber, we had uh, fed online to offline models for food delivery startups and of course other models. But we even we even witness much success stories when it comes to online to offline, actually in retail world. So that's exactly the problem that we wanted to solve. That is, how do we actually be the app for helping retailers increase their footfalls? So um, as the MC was mentioning right now, that we do install apps for coupons, and as soon as we uh, uh, we avail the coupons, we uninstall the app because uh, it it was only the it was only the first time uh, or the first transaction was free of cost. It's a reason. You were incentivized to uh, you were incentivized to install the app. So, um, so in short, I'll I'll walk you through the shops of model, but I'll be more focusing on the omnichannel bit itself. So, some of the brands that we've already signed up already, and uh, and and when we meet these brands, they feel that okay, we've got somebody who is asking us actually not to sell online, but who is in who is indicating that okay, we're going to increase your footfalls in the stores. So the whole idea with uh, the whole idea with Shops Up in short is that we help help users to discover the products around you. And when you walk into a store, you get something called a shots or points, and you accumulate these shots or points, and you are able to redeem it for a free uh, cappuccino in a Starbucks, or you could you could have a free Uber ride, or you could uh, or you could you could watch a free movie. It's very similar to a model that's in the U.S. called Shopkick, and the whole idea is that. Uh, how do we add gamification for the whole shopping experience amongst the users so that, uh, uh, of course, with all, due, uh, with all due respect, especially for the women users who like to do window shopping, how do we really incentivize for them to do window shopping? And uh, we influence them to actually make a purchase while they're in the store. So, uh, so over the years, we've seen single channel, uh, the single channel models. We've also seen. Uh, so we've also seen the multi-channel models, which we are operating in isolation. So in case uh, if you had a platform which only sells online, but uh, you may not have a seller who, are so, who is also selling offline. And it wouldn't be the same inventory. I mean, if you, if you meet any of the brands, uh, in case, uh, for example, the Fab India as example, the Fab India, in case if they had to sell online, it would be a separate warehouse. It is separately earmarked. The inventory is separately earmarked for them to sell it online. And, and for them to sell it offline, it's, uh, it would be a separate inventory. So it's never. Uh, it happens that if you're staying in the Brigade Gateway and if you wanted to buy something from Fab India, it is very unlikely that you would, you would have your shipment that comes from the Fab India store that's in Orion Mall, but it, could, it would be sent from maybe from one of their warehouses that's sitting in Mumbai or somewhere else. So how do you make sure that, how do you build a model that's more efficient? And uh, so that's exactly about the Uberification for the retail world. And uh, yeah, so that's exactly the problem that we wanted to solve. And uh, there's a huge, uh, there's a huge opportunity, especially for mobile app developers, to see, uh, actually, to figure out is there any way that they could add more value, actually, inside the retail world, which is, uh, of course, the market size is huge. Uh, of course, omni-channel is uh, so that's exactly the whole experience that we want to want to offer to the user. That is, is there any way we would have a user who is able to discover the products? 
he is able to visit uh, he is able to book the product but he could pick it up in the store or he is in the store uh, he could do he could do a web rooming where he makes the he makes a research about the product but he visits the store and he picks it up and how do you also kind of i wouldn't say we would want to encourage showrooming experience because that's going to hurt uh, of course hurt the retailers or franchises footfalls of course showrooming experience is when you would have your users who would go to the store and uh, which used to happen probably four years back. I still remember my dad used to do it. Like uh, when he wanted to buy an iPhone, he would go to the Freelance Digital, make the sales guy completely explain how does the iPhone work, make him show it everything. He would, within the store's Wi-Fi, he would access Flipkart's website or Amazon's website. He sees that iPhone is much lesser and he's convinced that he wants to buy an iPhone because of the sales guy's efforts in this Reliance Digital. And ultimately he makes a purchase in Flipkart because of the cost advantage. So. Um, is there any way we could we could further incentivize these users and we could influence them, and 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 eventually if there are startups that could build or the apps that could build multi-brand uh, of course multi-brand loyalty around them, so that if user feels that okay I have seen this I like the product uh, I know that I would be saving much but in exchange I would be earning some points or I would be having uh, having further incentives so I rather make a purchase right now instead of instead of me uh, actually waiting uh, like actually waiting for the shipment to uh, actually to come from Flipkart or Amazon. So, uh, of course, one of the research uh, actually shows that 44% of the shoppers that we've seen would actually open their smartphones inside the store to make the research and to do product comparison. They'd go to Amazon, they'd go to Flipkart, or any other e-tailing platforms to figure out uh, if there's a better price available to understand the reviews of the product. And uh, so now the same thing. So how do you encourage the users to open up their smartphone and and uh, and of course, to make it, uh, 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 if they're able to use it for in-store payments, if they're able to, if they're able to accumulate points, or if they're able to, uh, if they're able to enroll for, uh, for the brand's loyalty program, of, of, of course, within one single app. So within the Omnichannel, we've seen that, uh, which, which we all believe is going to be the future, where is there any way we could actually merge the online experience and the offline experience? And uh, we, could, we could offer an experience for the user, as I explained with the Fab India experience, that he is able to visit a store, he likes a product online, he is able to visit the store and pick it up, or he is liking a product that's available in the store, he orders it in the store, but he may not have the inventory available inside the store, it gets, it gets shipped to him in, uh, at his home. And one of the very interesting statistics that uh, would say is that uh, People who've shopped offline and, uh, and online, or, or, or people who've shopped in, in omnichannel mediums, are the stickiness is extremely very high, and, and the repeat sales is also extremely very high. So, so within the U.S., we've seen that uh, when when companies like Macy's, or uh, it could be Walmart as well, when they launch their own uh, their own apps, their sales have gone up because. Uh, you would have a user who is able to discover the stock status, is able, is able to see if, if Macy's has this new collection that's come there, and he visits the Macy's store because he knows that he's not going to, he's not going to have any more surprises. He knows that he likes, he likes the product, he's going to pick it up in the store, but for the fact that he's installed the Macy's app, he also earns those loyalty points and he's also, uh, he's also been incentivized by which uh, he's influenced to do more sales while they're in the store. Uh, uh, so one more, uh, like one more validation that we had is whenever we did the survey, we realized that uh, you would have a user who would step out of his home to, to make a purchase in a mall for maybe a specific shirt, but he, he ended up making, uh, or uh, he's been upsold by the, of course, brands when he is in the mall because of, of instant sale or, uh, or an offer that's going on, or he sees something which is, uh, which is excellent or, uh, for the visual merchandising, and, he feels he feels more attracted to make more of course, more additional purchases while they're in the store. So uh, we call them as mobile millennials, where uh, we see that it's going to be the future, where we would see more and more users, or and we see more and more startups that could focus on on solving the problem for the retailers uh, who are mainly brick and mortar. So helping them or helping the users to access the product reviews while they're in the store. Is there any way they could make the check-in while they're in the store so that they could earn some points, which is what ShopsUp is doing. So as soon as they, they walk into a store, so we offer them something called a shorts, and if they make more purchase in the store, so they would get additional shorts, which is nothing but points, which they could accumulate and they could actually redeem it for, 
maybe for a Zara's gift card, or they could purchase on Amazon, or they could, uh, they could visit Starbucks. So similarly, is there any way that they could, uh, of course, eventually we also believe that over five years, we see that India would more focus about, uh, e-commerce would be, would be more about convenience, and it's not going to replace the in-store experience, but of course, uh, uh, of course, convenience is a huge thing, but we, we hope those deep discounts will not sustain for longer. So we still believe that the e-tailing and, and e-commerce still, will still be there, it's, it's going to flourish, but we wouldn't see the, uh, we didn't, uh, we will not witness those deep discounts that's happening right now, and uh, and we've already seen, we've already seen what's happened with some of the startups uh, which are offering the deep discounts. So, so another big thing that we hope uh, is going to happen and, and influence the millennials and uh, and of course mobile users while they're in the shopping is uh, the in-store payment. So, is there any way that we could we could have more apps that could come that could uh, that could encourage users to make the payment and the POS in their hands? So, for example. Uh, we are about to sign up. Uh, we are about to sign up one of the biggest sports brand, and and one of the problem statement that they face is that uh, how do they, uh, how could they optimize their administrative costs and billing costs, and and how could they remove the POS counters itself, which is very similar to Apple, right? If you visit an Apple store uh, outside of India, you will never find the billing section at all. That is, uh, you pick up an iPad and you would have somebody who walks into uh, who walks to you with with his iPhone, which has a scanner, he scans the barcode, swipes your card, he issues a bill there, and you simply walk out. Is there any way that we could, we could make the user's phone as a POS, where the, the user is able to scan an item or an inventory, he's able to scan the product, he knows the price, he sees the product reviews, and he's able to make the payment, he simply walks through the security who removes the RFID sticker and he walks out. And the most important is that uh, if we open our own wallets, we see that we would have loyalty cards from uh, Shopper Stop to Macy's to, of course, multiple uh, multiple loyalty cards. How do you, of course, how uh, uh, how could we build something where you could aggregate all these loyalty cards, all these loyalty coupons, and you make it more hyper local? For example, if if I'm near Orient Mall right now, and it would say that, hey, actually in your Levi's you got uh, 500 loop points, and you could actually redeem it now which is worth of 500 rupees. It's many times I've got surprised because whenever I'm at the POS section of, uh, of these brands, when they ask that if I, have, if I have a loyalty card, I would simply share my mobile number and, and it would be a surprise for me that when they say that, hey, you, you actually had 500 points. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's very important in case if we could have more and more apps and, and of course mobile would be the way for us to replace these physical loyalty cards. So, I'm running out of time, so so in short, uh, this, this would be the store of the future. Yeah. So in short, we've seen these startups, which uh, like something like Shopkick and others who uh, uh, who've been valued and who've sold their companies at approximately billion dollar valuations as well. Uh, so they were actually solving simple, uh, of course, simple problems. They were extremely lean. They didn't have to hire delivery boys. They didn't have to have to worry about logistics. It still is the huge problem in India, and uh, I wanted to emphasize that, of course, within the mobile space, there's a, there's a huge opportunity for us to make an impact for the retail world.